Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, there's a great news out of the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go in the newsletters, you're going to see the opening call on the left-hand side. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. Get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And then get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. As you get Basil's newsletter, you're going to see there's about 12 archives out there. You'll really get to understand how Basil looks at the market and how you can ride that wave. And those waves have been big. Basil big Chapman, waves, what's yes. going on? This is... Uh Nazare waves, yeah. Hey, let me ask you first. Are you guys getting hit with snow? You know what's very interesting? It was raining very heavily, and they said at about 12 o'clock we should turn it to snow, and then we'll see what happens. Well, at 12 o'clock, there were these big flakes that suddenly started coming. I've never seen the switch so quick where it went from rain to these big flakes, and now it's all gone. In fact, there's just a little bit of rain, and it cool. depends where. Some places have got quite a bit of snow. Just where I am off uh, 128, I'd always say. Uh, on this no, because Caitlin's right there, too. I was curious. Yeah, okay, and good. That's so good. It's, yeah, so, that's, uh, so far it's good. Okay, now and, let's talk uh, about the waves in the market. Okay, so there are a couple of things that are going on. And number one is, I'll start off with this middle chart right here. The middle chart, I talk about narrow rectangle patterns and large rectangle patterns and H and, and cup, uh, cup patterns and arch patterns. And you can see inside this weekly chart of the Dow, there was this arch formation. And then we decisively took out the left side low. Um, and that said that the next important support is this Chapman inside track. It was a repellent zone. For a while now, has been a propellant zone, and that is really important. It's actually gone a little deeper than it should, and that makes me very cautious. So now what we're doing for subscribers to my opening call, we're just trying to trade, uh, taking a small position. But uh, in this case, uh, we took the S, the three times long, the UDOW, uh, and we've had a core position for quite some time. But we have a trading positions that we put on, and we see if it can rally and then take it off as the stops are hit and take a little profit and we keep doing that. One of the things I'm looking at is the stochastic on the left side, this is the, um, the stochastic right here at the bottom, is down at 8%. This is starting to get into an area where it very quickly needs to get into the teens. So that's one thing that I'm looking for. The MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is still very negative. The vertical lines right here are called the histogram. Those lines are still expanding, meaning that the green faster moving average is still moving away from the slow moving average. That's going to take, I would say, if we take a move up into the 32,800, 900 area to really get the MACD to cross positive. So that's a big ask at this particular point. And the other thing is we've been, ra we've been raising cash because there are, one of the things that really worried me last week was the way the XL actually for about two weeks now is the way the XLF, which I always consider together with the semiconductor index, I like when the S when the financials, that's the S and P Select Financial Spider Fund, is moving nicely to the upside with the market. It just gives me confidence. I, I haven't got any uh, other than practical reasons. I don't have any fundamental reasons why that should be, but it's really good to see the banks and the financials moving in a positive way to confirm. And the other thing is the SMHs, and this is a divergence I'm seeing right now. The SMHs, the semiconductors, are, are holding within a narrow band, and they try, whenever you see these two lines here, like this little red line, right here, let me expand it out a little bit there, and the green line, this is I call this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And uh, because every time the price, look how often the price has gone right to the level, uh, this inside track, and then it gets repelled. So today you went to the red line, couldn't make it. So this is going to be very important over the next, I would say today's Tuesday. I'd say going into early next week, if there's any chance that the SMH is again, because I like when the SMHs lead the market up or down. In this case, it's in a holding pattern, yet the, the market has gone down. So it's really important for me to see the semiconductors move into the 
251 area. That's 10 points up from here. I'm not sure what's going to do it, but that's what I would need. Now, this is another thing that I'm looking at. <clears throat> Schwab, I've used this as a kind of a benchmark for us because we are still long from way back in 2020 uh, at 45, the IAA, which is the ETF for the broker dealers. I couldn't understand why the market was rallying so strongly uh, going into the February high, and yet Schwab was acting so poorly, and then it couldn't hold that 200 period moving average, and it broke down and it went just from that level at 76, just uh, five sessions or so ago, it plummets down to around number 45. So now I just wanted to go through a little kind of a litany of things that I look at. I, always, I have a technique that I call the Chapman Wave price volume climax and very often over the over a year you can see so many stocks that have bad news reports or something really ugly they're on their way down and then they have this massive gap down and the volume is is you can't even say it's double but it's it's huge it's way more than anything you've seen before and i look at round numbers so schwab yesterday had a 45 round number low and um Within this context, what I wanted to say, I had it as a buy for subscribers only if certain conditions were met, and it had to it had to be under 55 before 10:20. Well, it got to 55, spiked up to about 49. No, sorry, it spiked up to about I think it was 52, and then it went to 57, and then it pulled back, and then it went to 55, but that was later than I wanted, and here it is at 58. So my rule of thumb is that when you see this kind of climax to the bo to a bottom, there should be 28 sessions above this low of 45. It doesn't tell you how high. You need other techniques to, to, to uh, look at to get that particular uh, aspect. But it does say that the low, in this case of Schwab hitting 45, it should go for at least 28 days above. And if it's holding very strong, that can go to 56 days. I'm really intrigued. So when you're saying 28 days, Bells, are you talking about trading days? I'm talking about trading days. Okay, yes. so that's a, that's a month and a one third, folks. There's 21 April, trading right. days a month. Yeah. Right. So it takes you into uh, into April. But what's really important about this, it isn't just Schwab because this is, I mean, Schwab was kind of indicating part of that whole financial uh, sell-off. So I think it's going to tell me a lot about, and you were just an. A, a, you were analyzing and giving us a really good sense of the 80 cents to the dollar. That I mean, things are going on here. This is not a one-off deal. This is something that's going to be ongoing. And the, it's really complex. And there's a, there's a lot of, if you look at it deeply, there's a lot of finagling going on. How the market deals with it is going to be very important. So I, I think you've pinpointed something really, really, I think it's uh, crux to what we're looking at here in terms of the financial aspect. How this unfolds is going to be really important. So um, that's one thing. The other is that I like to look at six-month in increments over decades. And very often, a low that's made in October can be retested in the semiconductors or the S&P in March. And sometimes it's the other way around. So I'm really watching this whole aspect of what happens in this month, if we re retest the lows that we saw in the market. They are two big months, there's no doubt, man. That Listen, folks, come over to our website at TFN. Newsletters, opening call right on the left-hand side. Baz, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow morning. Thank you, Tom. You too. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.